So my main focus for this video is going to be my thoughts on the fire cams since that's the topic of conversation at the moment. But there's other things that I will discuss as well. I will just comment because you're going to hear throughout a bit of a clanking noise in the background. Confession time. Despite having multiple toys, my cat loves it when she gets given a lid off a soft drink bottle. So periodically I let her have one for a few days. This time around I actually hadn't intended on giving her one. I just dropped it when I was putting it back on an empty bottle for recycling and she heard it and thought I was giving it to her so I didn't have the heart to take it away. So you will hear her going flat out playing with that non-stop while I'm talking. And that's what that noise is. And so a few housekeeping things, so to speak, first of all. I've recently, or this morning I dropped another video for members, which was a tour of what is the oldest pottery in Australia. Um, at the end of that video, I've also done or shown some souvenirs that I bought for a members giveaway. So if you're a member and you haven't caught that video yet, um, go to the members tab, check it out um, and have a look. I have two souvenirs from the pottery that are giveaways for members and basically I'm going to do a another member video in about two days time where I draw the names for those two souvenirs um, so yeah if you're a member jump in go and have a look at that video if you're a member and you haven't discovered the playlist of videos that's there for members um if you go onto my home page there's a tab that's members and you'll see there'll be there's posts for members there's videos for members um there's also stickers i think they're referred to as stickers for members which you can use on any of my videos i will be doing another live stream in the next day or so um, I had considered it today, but simply not enough hours in the day. I might end up doing a, a one later on, which probably would be a middle of the night one for people in the US. We'll see how we go with that. In terms of upcoming videos for this week, it's still going to be, to some extent, a bit of a lucky dip. I think I mentioned this last week. I have a whole heap of videos, photos, a bunch of stuff that I've saved over the last 20 months in relation to Kylie's case. So what I'm doing at the moment is going back over stuff and just trying to clear out some stuff, make a bit more space and also to consolidate everything into one space. So in doing that, I'm pulling out videos and stuff that I just want to put on YouTube, get them out of the way, and then I can delete the originals and create more space. So there'll be various things coming out through the week that are, are a result of that. So I can't necessarily give you a preview of what that will be. I am also currently working on a video from a Captain Kurt Reacts panel. To me, was one of the more confusing panels with Megan Cole on it, just because of the way it jumped all over the place with topics, and there were quite a few panelists on as well, which also added to the confusion. So, for my own understanding, I've decided to break it down and do videos that cover single topics from within that panel. So 
I'm working on a video that looks at the question of why choose Ikid Mel and Tony Dodge for those early interviews. In terms of other content, I do want to get out some more Sunil Fraser content. I haven't decided yet on what that will be, but I do like to try and get something out at least on a weekly basis for the Sunil Fraser case. Um, If there's any updates with Samantha Murphy, then obviously I'll be talking about that. And I'm also looking at the Riley Strain case and Sebastian Rogers, but I don't know if I'll do, I'll do videos on them. Um, I may do brief commentaries or it may just be that I'm looking at them in the background. But there's also the possibility that I may do videos about them If you do want me to do videos about either of them, um, make a comment below and let me know. Um, Now, before I move on to talking about the fire cams, you'll probably notice that the flipping of the lid has now ended and we're up to snoring dog phase. So I guess that's a good way of timing my live streams or my drive chats which I guess makes it obvious when I do the drive chats I record the driving and then I do the chat afterwards to add to the videos rather than try to focus on talking about stuff when I'm driving so let's talk about the fire cams big thing for me is the timing of it. We had the Adventures with Purpose video come out at the very beginning of October. This was, I guess you could say, almost earth shattering. I think that period of time after Kylie was found And before the Adventures with Purpose video came out, I think many of us had resigned ourselves to accept that maybe Kylie did drive herself into the reservoir. It certainly seemed that way. And for those of us who'd followed Adventures with Purpose in the past, we sort of clung to that notion of them having found vehicles before when authorities hadn't. But let's talk about timing. Adventures with Purpose dropped this video in which they point out, for starters, a number of problems with the case. Doug's quote, Helicopter pilots said that they could see the bottom of the reservoir. That was pretty direct. How else can you interpret that as she wasn't there originally? The car went in later. He talks about how he can't condone people doing evil things. I'm paraphrasing there. But he he says it in those words, essentially. And then we have um, Nick Rin coming up and saying that it looks like it's foul play. Something's not right. And, of course... The big bombshell for everyone was the AAA guy at the very start of the Adventures with Purpose video. Suddenly you have a witness saying that he serviced Kylie's car the day after she went missing. So suddenly people are questioning 
what actually happened to Kylie. Maybe it was foul play after all. And you've got credible channels like Judy Ron who are asking those questions as well and looking at the footage shared by Adventures with Purpose and saying, look at all the things that they did wrong here. Something doesn't add up. So then all of a sudden, Megan jumps up and she's all over panels again. She hadn't been doing any panels until the Adventures with Purpose video came, back, came out. Suddenly she pops up again and she's on panels all over the place. And we have, as Ara said, she pops up and she says, I have proof that you're all going to see tomorrow that's going to make you all want to apologise for Sa- to Sammy. I can prove that Sammy did nothing wrong. Now, pretty much concurrently, we have her coming out with this audio of this person or supposed person who she apparently interviewed in a shop who claimed that she saw headlights get really close to the water. People ran with this, even though it was not a witness saying, I saw a car drive into the water. Not once was it said she saw a car drive into the water. Megan tried initially before she gave this audio to say that she had heard that someone had seen the car drive into the water and that they had called 911. But Michelle, after dark, checked all the calls, all the information, did a FOIA, and it came up that no one had called 911 that she could see to report a car driving into the water. Megan then turned around and said, Oh, no, she lied, and I found out that she lied. And no, she didn't call 911. And she saw only saw the car go close to the water. But look, I now have an audio. Conveniently, even though any other time that we've heard Megan on a live stream in a shop anywhere, it's not overly loud, this particular audio that she gives us has got so much background noise that it's almost impossible to hear what the woman that she's talking to is saying. There's music going on in the background, there's chatter, there's all sorts of stuff. But we're supposed to believe that this is real. And of course, like I said, almost simultaneously, we get the fire cam footage coming out. There's a bit of confusion now over where it originally came from. In my memory, it was SF who originally put it out there. And this was done via emails to content creators. However, at the same time, there was a channel that popped up called STEM KB, which was also doing investigations into these fire cams and and showing videos from these fire cams. I can't put any credibility on this STEM KB. I'll come back to the SF dude. But I can't put any credibility on this STEM KB because if you look, if you go and look for his channel, it's still there with three videos on it. That is all. The first two videos were fire cam related The third video was something to do with Idaho 4. I didn't look at that. I had a quick look at the fire cam videos, but I just thought, well, I can't give any credibility to someone who just pops up randomly out of the blue with these fire cam footages. Because personally... 
I don't put any credibility on the fire cam footage at all. Let's go back to SF. So everyone got in a flurry because all these big content creators were emailed a link that they could follow that showed them fire cam footage. They could go to this particular site and they could go to the historical footage that apparently showed Kylie's car going into the water. Of course, other creators, or those of us who weren't creators at that point in time, had to do our own research. We weren't given those links. So we had to go in via the Google search. And here's what happened. The people who went in via Google search actually ended up on an entirely different web page altogether, which showed a completely different camera angle and a different quality camera. And then suddenly there's a a news article. When people started questioning this on YouTube and saying, what's going on? Why is it like this? And people are going, look, the the historical data is no longer there. You can't click an archive button and go back. People started questioning what's going on here. And suddenly, SF provides an article. The same person who emailed people with the fire cam footage provides an article saying that they're switching over to a new system so that there's actually two web pages in running at that one point in time. Who does that? To me, that just didn't seem logical. It's not how you do it. Because if you're working on updating a web page, you do that behind the scenes. You don't have to list it publicly until it's ready to go, at which point you then pull down the old page. You can still have the same URL. You have a link. You have a redirect for that web page. I've never seen a web page done like that before. So to me, that was a huge red flag. There was just so much that didn't fit. And then we had, I think it was CC, went and took some photos of the towers where this webcam footage had come from. And looking at those photos, you can see that the position of the camera, had it been turned around to face towards the reservoir, then it would have been obscured. Now, the other thing was, you get people like Grey Hughes who were doing overlays thing is these overlays weren't a hundred percent exact overlays um uh individual uh they have a few different usernames but biosync they've done a a lot of research on this and shown that it wasn't in sync and that it just doesn't work Um, Shan actually talked about this in her most recent live, so go and have a look at that. It's worth listening to. So there's so many things that just do not add up with the fire cam. So for me, that says utter, utter BS. I can't get on board. It seems to me that what we're seeing here is a major reaction of people who are trying to stop people from looking at the Kylie Rodney case. As soon as the Adventures with Purpose video came out, 
Suddenly we have Megan reappearing on panels. We have Megan producing an audio. And we have these fire cams. And how is it that suddenly we go from one one lot of fire cam footage to four separate lots of fire cam footage, all of different quality? And if you go now and you look at fire cam footage, like from today, you'll see that the nighttime footage is entirely different to what we were shown when it came to Kylie's car going in the water. Conveniently, this footage apparently shows Kylie's car going in the water at exactly 12.33, which, of course, is when her phone gave its last blip. Or at least that's the original interpretation that we were given of the fire cam footage. But since then, people have spoken about multiple cars driving into the reservoir at different times and Kylie's car going into the reservoir at a different time. And people have just become really confused over what happened. But it seems that the preferred narrative that we were given was that the car went in at 12.33 and sank almost immediately within 30 seconds. There's so many problems with this. And like I said, the final blip from Kylie's phone, the last communication it had with any towers being 12.33, supposedly aligning with the fire cam footage. But Kylie's phone was an iPhone. There's an old video that I did ages and ages ago, and I might do a redo of it because I think, um, you know, when you do early, when you start a YouTube channel, your videos aren't great. But when it comes to iPhones, the model of phone that Kylie had could be submersed underwater for quite some time before it would finally completely die. So the statistics are that at the depth at which Kylie's car was at, a phone could last an iPhone of the models model that Kylie's was could last for roughly half an hour. Here's the thing. Kylie's phone stopped sharing its location at 12.03. So that means that it stopped sharing its location exactly 30 minutes before it completely ceased communication with any towers. Now, we don't know if the phone was found in Kylie's car. We don't know if the phone was found. But if Kylie had driven her car into the reservoir at 12.33, as we're supposed to believe from the fire cameras... Why did the location sharing go off half an hour before that? And why did the phone instantaneously die at 12.33 the same time? Because if she'd driven into the reservoir at 12.33, and if we're assuming that her driving into the reservoir at 12.33 means that there was no foul play, then she would have had her phone with her which means that the phone would have survived for another half hour underwater, meaning that we would expect that the last ping from the phone should have occurred at about 1.03, not 12.33. Now, if we also go back to the whole location sharing being turned off at 12.03... 
Here's my question with that. If the location services was turned off by Kylie at 12.03, why? Because she had rung her mum at half past 11 and said that she would be leaving shortly, what, 12.15 was it? To head home. So she was saying that she was leaving slightly later. And her mum said to her, wake me up when you get home. So if Kylie was going to be later and she thought that her mother must have been asleep, why turn off location services? If for some reason you're about to break your curfew but you know that your mother is asleep, what's the point in turning off location services? Aside from that, we know that Kylie was a good girl. The fact that she rang her mum to change her curfew says that she was a good girl. She wouldn't then turn around and turn off her location services to hide the fact that she's not heading home when she should be. So to me, that also points away from this idea that the fire camera proves that Kylie drove into the reservoir. Not only that, the video I did um, about a week ago of the car that drove into the lake nearby, um, there was another clip which may have only been in my members video, I'm not sure, but... It was a, a media clip by Herald Sun, I think, showing the car at the point when the local rescue people were there with the dinghy, getting the old couple out of the car to take them to shore. Now, that vehicle, the front end up to probably the level of the windows was submerged meaning that the battery of the car would have been submerged. And yet, you can see clearly in that video, the back wiper was still going on the car, and you could see the, I think, brake lights probably were lit up. And that's after the car had been submerged for a while. So you've got these cameras where apparently the car goes into the water and instantaneously all the lights go off. So, is that really how it was going to happen? We also know there's a a video that I did months ago where someone drove off a boat ramp and the car sank. But the amount of time it took for the car to sank with the windows open was enough time to get those people out of the car quite easily. It actually took several minutes before the car finally sank. We're talking about newer cars where the door seals are fairly adequate, so it's going to take a little while for the water to start going in, even with the windows open. It's only once the water reaches the level of the windows that things are going to speed up. But that said, we also know that it was muddy around the edge of the reservoir. So, and locals have said it is impossible. You cannot drive a car into the reservoir and sink it in the way that we're expected to believe because it would get stuck in the mud. So according to the fire cams, this car went out deep enough to sink and apparently sank within 30 seconds. That's impossible. 
if anyone can prove that it's possible, please do. But from everything we know, what we've been shown on the fire cams is all an impossibility. So why are people still claiming that the fire cams prove that it was an accident? To me, the only thing the fire cams prove is that there was something dodgy going on trying to disprove Adventures with Purposes video because they made it pretty damn clear that there was foul play involved. Let's just remember one thing. Someone who is connected with the teens, and I'm thinking along the lines of hamburgers right now, had connections with the fire cams. We're talking about an area where people have money. We're talking about Silicon Valley where people have the capacity to hack. We're talking about a case where, and this is not something that I've made overly public before, but around the time that the fire cameras appeared, There was also this really strange thing happening if, and I found it and I sent pictures and links to various creators and I think this was what originally got me thinking I need to make my own channel because I suddenly discovered that doing a search for a specific term, I think it was Kylie Rodney Missing, and then if you were looking for images... What happened was that images that were associated with Facebook, I think it was, came up as completely different images unrelated to Kylie's case, but which were at the same time incredibly sus. There was one image which was um, actually from a different news story about people smuggling people over the borders. And the crazy thing about that image was that the image showed someone, it showed a car like an SUV, the boot up, and it showed where someone had been hidden inside that SUV under the boot area. And that was one of the images that came up. Uh, in that search. There were a lot of really weird images that just seemed to... They had nothing to do with Kylie's case, but they also seemed to be too much coincidentally connected as well. That's something possibly for another video. Um, But I'd like to know where everyone else stands on the cameras me personally this is going to be my last video I think on the cameras or I do have some stuff that I recorded which was showing what what you see now in terms of nighttime footage as opposed to what we're supposed to believe was the nighttime footage from Kylie's car and I may do a video from that but to me that's about as far as I'm going to go in terms of looking at the fire cams because I just do not believe them to be remotely credible. For me there's far too many questions And I think the important thing too is that the mainstream media never paid any attention to them. Why? Because they couldn't prove that they were true.
Anyway, let me know what you think.